Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Hank Strange, and we are doing a breaking news update with John Crump of Ammo Land News. John, welcome back, my friend. How's it going? Uh, not bad. How you doing, Hank? Good, good. So, so the title of this is going to be uh, John Crump Holiday Updates. Uh, basically, we're going to be talking about upcoming stories that John has coming out. Uh, uh, quite a few of them are going to have to do with the ATF. Um, and one of them has to do with the ATF and Walmart, right? Correct. Okay. So uh, where do you want to start with this? Uh, with this? Well, actually, before we even get into it, let me, let me mention this. Both of us are going to be going on the winter holiday break, right? We're, we're at the beginning um, of the week here. Today's Monday. I think by Wednesday I'm taking off. Are you doing the same thing? Yeah, Wednesday is going to be my last show. I will be taking off. Uh, if it I'm only going to cover like really big stories if they break, but mm -hmm. I will be on top with me. So if something breaks or if I get some type of information while I'm gone, I, I, I will still be able to write it up. Yeah, I think that's pretty much the same thing here. The end of the week, uh, I think Friday's Christmas, and uh, so the podcast is going to be breaking. You know, there's lots of different things going on. I still will be putting up videos and doing other things, but there's no podcast. And if major stuff comes up, we'll try to figure out what to do with it. I would say stick to both of our social media if you really want to um, stay up to date because I'll still be posting things there. You can find John at John Crump is most, most of your stuff, right? Real John Crump at like Instagram. If you go to Crumpy.com, everything's there. But Real John Crump on Instagram. Uh, okay. I think where everyone's following me, but I'm Crumpy at I'm Poller and Crumpy SS on Twitter. Okay, cool. Uh, group on facebook but most most people follow me on instagram for some reason okay all right so say that again john crump 2 on youtube okay yeah you had to you had to make a whole other one <laughs> yeah if you have any issues you could hit me up or whatever uh we'll we'll figure out how to get you same thing with me you could just find me at hank strange if you want to communicate uh, during this break i really think john that there is going to be more stuff coming over the break i don't have any like insider information on that that's just like a gut feeling what, what's your answer to that uh i think it's going to calm down until after the first of the year i think everything came out at this point because they want to go on vacation oh, oh okay so they themselves are doing all of this yeah, up front so they can go off of the big people schedules are off next week Okay, I see. All right, so you you are probably right. We'll let the folks out there uh, let us know which which one of us do they think is right, and and ultimately time will tell, right? But I I am changing my mind now because I think you're probably right on that. They want to go off and spend the holidays uh, with their family. I guess in some ways they function like everyone else, uh, you know. Yeah, that's why they dumped everything this 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 past couple weeks. Yeah, they went off their place before the holidays. Right. Okay. So where should we start here? We, should we talk about these raids? Because I think since the last time we, that we did stuff, um, ATF was doing more raids on um, on companies out there. And I believe this was specifically uh, pointed towards the solvent traps. Um, uh, diversified machine was the big one that, that got out there to everyone. But you're saying that's not the only one, right? Yeah, the, it's the uh, raids against solvent trap companies started all the way back in March when they started raiding uh, Aegis. Aegis uh, got raided because Aegis products. They got raided because they were ordering parts from China, and mm -hmm. customers called ATF and said we had these suspicious packages from China. Mm -hmm. ATF looked at that. They said these look like suppressor parts. They made a controlled delivery, and then they raided Aegis saying, "Hey, you're selling suppressor parts. Okay. You got to remember, one of these parts were completed." Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how they could uh, assume that they're suppressor parts, mm -hmm. but it did everything. And it went down to uh, another raid at Quiet Boar. Mm -hmm. Quiet Boar raided because someone was selling machine guns and drugs. They busted him, and when they busted him, they found a Quiet Boar solvent trap that okay. was converted into a suppressor. And they raided Quiet Boar, even though Quiet Boar had nothing to do with this guy. Uh, but Quiet War is back in business, but now you have to submit a Form 1 before you can actually buy their products. 
Right. I see on their website that there's stuff there about the Form 1. Now, the interesting thing is if I go to Diversified um, Machines website, it says 503 service unavailable. So that it looks like that whole site is down. So from what I'm hearing, uh, which is unconfirmed, mm -hmm. that they have took everything, including customer records, which okay. is for they took some customer records. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems like all these raids center around a couple different things. One is intent. Um, intent means that you are trying to sell these as a suppression point. They're looking at search engine optimization, mm -hmm. like meta tags and stuff like that. Like if, if, if in your SEO you have suppressor or silencer, they're saying, hey, that's intent. You're selling silencer parts. Mm -hmm. they have, they're also going up to the full kits to convert to uh, suppressors. Um, also, the depot marks, the depot marks in the caps. If you have depot marks in the caps, they're saying that that's a, like a guide to drill out. So, therefore, you're selling press parts, which makes no sense. Okay. Um, also, they're doing like parts from China. They're saying if you order parts from China, you're ordering uh, uh, weapons parts, and that violates arms treaties. Okay. So actually. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, no. I was gonna say, uh, like you said, there's been a lot of this going on. This is not the first time they're doing that stuff, but maybe they're trying to get all these cases in. It's not necessarily that's like I think what you're saying is this is the case that they're trying to make, but that's not necessarily what's happening here, right? These aren't suppressors until someone decides to actually make them into suppressors. But, they're, but yeah. they're trying to prove intent of these companies to sell de facto suppressors without going through uh, NFA stuff. Yeah, that is correct. Mm -hmm. Trying to like, prove intent. Mm -hmm. And it's really ridiculous. There's a YouTube channel called Truck Master where this guy works on diesel trucks and he ordered a bunch of diesel fuel filters mm -hmm. on diesel trucks. And the APF showed up at his place of business and said, we want the suppressors you order from China. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I don't know what you're talking about. He's like, the diesel truck uh, fuel filters and show him the order form. And he's like, no, I, I work on diesel trucks. Mm -hmm. And he had to go back and show him what, how, what he's using them for and how he's using them. Mm -hmm. Okay, so did they wind up arresting him? Did he catch any charges? Or? No, anyone yet. Okay. And if okay. Above stuff in particular, they mm -hmm. will say stuff are illegal. You're like, well, why are you raiding and taking all these people's products? And mm -hmm. their response is solvent traps are illegal. It's mm -hmm. like, it's legal, but yet you're raiding places and taking products and customer records. Right. Yeah. They're obviously trying to build some kind of database here. You know? They're trying to build a database, and I think a lot of it has to do with intimidation. A lot of these solvent trap companies are small mom and pop shops mm -hmm. that only like, like five, ten employees, sometimes less. The big ones have like ten employees. Okay. Small ones, have employees. you actually spoken to these companies? Uh, can you tell us like how many companies? Give us some other names. Uh, I've spoken to a lot of these companies. A lot of these companies have spoken to me off the record because they okay. don't they don't want to become a target. And mm -hmm. I totally agree with that. And I'm not going to out anyone who's talked to me. But mm -hmm. they're vulnerable and they all have the same stories about the ATF being overbearing, hassling them. Mm -hmm. You can't do this. And when they ask, well, what can we do? If you say solvent traps are legal, but you're saying that these solvent traps aren't, can you give us some guidelines? And the ATF's answer is no. And these people will have submitted samples to the ATF to try to get stuff back, and the ATF not giving them anything back. And it looks like intimidation because a lot of these guys are very, very small, and they don't have like the big time lawyers. Like I know Polymer 80 has like Chuck Michelle, who's like this big time gun lawyer mm -hmm. and uh i don't like uh sb tactical they have their big time lawyers mm -hmm. and I'll, but these small little solvent trap companies they don't have that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so uh, you know the atf is trying to intimidate them and plus another thing is that since they are such a niche market the gun in, the gun world just doesn't take interest in them and the gun industry doesn't do anything to defend them because the market share is so small mm -hmm. and the money that they brand is so small that these big organizations, which, you know, will do everything to protect braces or do everything to protect, uh, you know, 80% frames, 
they won't do anything to protect these guys because their market share is just small in their in their niche market. Mm-hmm. But what I mean is, you know, this is going to end up being more hurtful to the overall gun industry. And I wish the gun industry would just take notice and say, hey, these guys are small, but they need help, too. Yeah, we have to fight every infringement. I think across the industry, it's always easier for the big players in the industry to get representation, not just lawyers, but to get uh, folks who do what we do to talk about them, right? That's just yeah. always that's just always easier, um, just because you know maybe you know they've done things or whatever that the the guys who are out there um, have relationships with them or whatever, and they're like, hey, you know. Uh, Let's let's defend these guys or let's get out there and speak up for these guys. But I agree with you that ultimately we have to stop every single infringement, because if they're allowed to get away with it with the little guys, then overall everyone suffers for that. You know, and and we we suffer one of the ways that we suffer other than, you know, these infringements being allowed to, you know, maybe be established or something is that we also don't have competition in the space. Correct. Also, I talked to one of the people who are in this field, and they went into the business of solvent traps because they work on uh, machinery, Mm -hmm. slaves and stuff like that, and their customers didn't have a lot of business due to COVID. Mm -hmm. So they did this to keep their customers from To keep everything going. Yeah. Keep people employed. And they're just coming in there, and they're trying to say... No, you can't do that. Mm-hmm. It's a legal industry, but the ATF is trying to shut down a legal industry. Yeah, let's explain why it's legal. So you can make these uh, quote-unquote solvent traps. They're not actually suppressors until the end user converts them into a suppressor. But that end user can get paperwork to do that, right? Yeah, you can get a Form 1 and you can get it serialized and you can get it uh, registered. Yeah. Cool. With the NFA, I mean, there's nothing illegal about it, or you can just throw it in the drawer and keep it for mm-hmm. when, you know. Yeah. But uh, it falls into the same realm as 80% lowers, etc. That you have the right to manufacture your own things, and this is an affordable way to do it because you know, look, there's different prices across the suppressor silencer market, but you know, it's it's made easier by these things that aren't completed when you can do the work that needs to be done. Therefore, it falls on the person who's doing that to to uh, register that with the ATF and say, hey, I'm making a suppressor here and do what they need to do. Up until that point, it's not illegal at all, right? Because it's not a suppressor or it's not a firearm. Yeah. I mean, you can go buy a, a flashlight, uh, like a, like a, like a mag light and take that and get a bunch of refrigerator plugs and drill mm-hmm. out and mm-hmm. make a suppressor that way so yeah. i don't see why this is any different yeah and solvent traps and i know a lot of people out there know even better than i do about it but solvent traps uh, fuel filters and things like that i know lola was saying to me what's the whole solvent trap thing all about it's just you know the the thread pitches are close enough that you can literally literally threads things on or there are adapters and things like that that people could do. But it's it's the intention. Once you intend to use that as a suppressor, you need to register it. If you don't, you're at fault. Otherwise, uh, folks out there who have the facilities to manufacture things, manufacturing and selling things to people that are not firearms or NFA items, they're not breaking any laws. Yeah, you can go to Walmart and you can buy a uh, adapter or a Home Depot or whatever and buy a uh, pipe adapter that actually will screw on uh, to an AR and the other end uh, will let you attach a fuel filter to it, mm-hmm. like oil. And then you got to suppress mm-hmm. the rate. Mm-hmm. So uh, are, are they going to start regulating people buying those at Walmart? Uh, yes. You know, it's, it all comes down to the intent of the law here, right? There's lots of, we can come up with a bunch of examples of things like that, of, of where you, you cross that line and walk into it. Okay, so several companies have been raided. Um, Diversified Machine was recently. Th- these other companies, were they before, after, or at they the were, same time as that? It was all before. They started raiding these companies back in March, and just no one took a notice because, like I said, it's They're so small, no one's paying attention. Yeah. 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 We pay attention to that stuff. 
Yeah, that same thing's happening with uh, when it comes to braces, for example, and even with the 80% lowers. There's other smaller company out, companies out there that make uh, pistol braces that no one's paying attention to, and they are suffering just as well, and they're trying to figure out what's the future of, uh, of this industry that they're in. And, you know, we've, we've got to stand up and fight for every one of those things. Okay, so the, do you have a, some kind of idea of when the uh, solvent... Uh, trap stories coming out uh, within the next couple of days next few days okay okay for Wednesday yeah okay that's all up to if you don't know how the Amoland thing works John writes the articles up to the editors to uh, to go through those things and publish them okay so um, do we do you want to cover a little bit what's going on with the brace situation and polymer 80 any news movement there? Um, going on with either one of those or, or both? Uh, with Polymer 80, everything is basically the same as what everyone already knows about. Mm-hmm. Polymer 80 have decided to stop selling their uh, buy, build, shoot kits, okay. which is probably a uh, good idea for now until that gets worked out what's legal and what's not legal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so and, but meanwhile, ATF has gotten customer information uh, from a couple of different sources on that. Stamps.com and also uh, from um, Stamps.com and also from Authorized.net. They right. got to, yeah. Uh, Polymer 80 themselves, my understanding, refused to give up that data. Except yeah. I think maybe there was a laptop or something that was uh, seized. Yeah, they seized the computer. So mm-hmm. I'm not really sure what they got. But most of the information was on the cloud and not on uh, any local computer. So it's possible that they got customer information from one of the computers, but uh, they're not sure, and no one's really sure. It depends on when they seized it, what exact information was on the computer at the time of seizure. Okay. Anything new on the brace front? Uh, the, the letters have went out, so you can go ahead yeah. and submit comments on the letter right mm-hmm. now. Uh, the ATF, from my inside sources, inform me that the NFA division is being beefed up They've already started to transfer employees over to train them up to be able to process what mm-hmm. they think be an influx of uh, form ones. Right. So regardless of uh, what folks think they're actually going to do with a letter writing campaign, these guys are getting well ready uh, yeah. for for enforcement of that, right? They are definitely gearing up. I'm not saying don't write letters. In mm-hmm. fact. You should write letters. I know we had a di- little disagreement on that. Yeah, yeah. I I disagree with you because I don't really feel like writing letters to the politicians that we've already supported and already done things. It's almost like we're begging them to to do something for us. Well, that's what we voted for them. They should either do it or don't, and then we should either support them in the future or not. But the idea of writing letters to them when they've already kind of like made these deals. Just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I think people's energy can go in other places, and um, I just think that, for for example, um, where you live, this is really important, right? So there's uh, Second Amendment sanctuary counties out there, and if you find out more about that and get your county into that, uh, make sure that your sheriff is is uh, is aware of that and is going to back you up when it comes to your Second Amendment rights. You know, we like as I said, we can vote. And we can definitely send money, I I feel, to organizations like GOA that's fighting back on this stuff, uh, Second Amendment Foundation, FPC, whoever whoever you are aware of and you think they're doing good work, you can support them and fight back in those ways. But ultimately, to me, it seems like these guys have their mindset on doing that and we have to have our mindset on not complying with it. And and I know you have a different opinion on that, right? Uh, Down on the not not compliance stuff, my Mm -hmm. opinion Mm -hmm. about that. Uh, but uh, the the letters, uh, the comments aren't going to politicians. They're going to bureaucrats. So maybe we can mm-hmm. put those bureaucrats in the mind. I know it's a long shot, mm-hmm. but I think that we have to go through the, the steps uh, before we do anything else. We can we can try to play it by their rules until it's time not to play it by their rules. Yeah. Ultimately, everyone has to make their own decisions out there of what they're going to do, right? I mean, this is the ultimate thing, right? Like, I could say what I'm going to do. You could say what you're going to do. But every person out there, everyone's situations are different. And, um, you know, 
everyone has to decide how they're willing to fight for something and where they where they want to take it. So um, I, I think the best ways, the best, most effective ways are through um, like challenges, the legal ways, right? Through challenges in the courts to everything that comes up. Now, I'm sure there's going to be people that say out there, well, the courts aren't um, having our back on that. They're not following the Constitution, even all the way up to the Supreme Court. They're refusing to take 2A cases. Okay, you know, this is this is why ultimately I think a lot of our energy has to go into, well, we're not complying with this stuff that's unconstitutional. Yeah, I mean, non-compliance for uh, ending prohibition mm-hmm. and a bunch of other stuff. Um, yeah. Non-compliance is civil disobedience, which is, I yeah. think, is a form of protest. Yeah. And, and you know what? Um, it's interesting, I think, with the 2A sanctuary thing. And we were talking about the holiday break coming up. And I know going forward into next year, once we come back, I'm not sure what you're going to do. You could you could probably chime in on that here. But me going forward on the podcast, I'm going to spend a lot of time focusing on the 2A sanctuary situation. I'm going to get there's a guy that has a website up on that. We've already had him on the podcast. I'm going to get him back in. We're going to talk more about this and figure out how do you talk to your local officials like your sheriff and other people that you voted and and, uh, put in positions right to defend and protect your rights. How do you communicate with them and make sure you're doing the things for them that you need to do so that when it comes down to something like these 2A sanctuaries, they, they mean something. Another thing with the potential Biden administration coming in here, if they really go after 2A sanctuaries, then what about the, you know, the immigration sanctuaries that exist in other places? So maybe that's something we'll see the Supreme Court actually take up and settle. If you go to gunowners.org, uh, uh, gunownersaction.org, uh, and slash SASO, mm-hmm. there's actually a whole thing about Second Amendment safety and ordinances, and there's a uh, a template for one, so you mm-hmm. can give yeah. your people. Yeah, this is a big thing. Did this start in Virginia? or uh, did not start in Virginia, okay. but it definitely took off in Virginia. Mm-hmm. There was under 10 before Virginia started passing theirs and Virginia I think we're up to like 120 some mm-hmm. uh, and from there when Virginia started passing all the stuff all, all around Virginia mm-hmm. a lot of other places started doing it okay so quick predictions on on braces uh, pistol braces and the 80 percent lowers once we get into next year what do you think we're looking at uh, I think it's going to be all out attack on everything like that. I think the next thing that they're going to do, and this is just looking at where it's going. I don't mm-hmm. have any information or anything there, but I think they're going to be going after 80 percent uh, lower receivers eventually. OK, yeah, um, I'm going to agree with that. I, I think that once we get into next year, especially after uh, inaugurations and things like that. After the 20th, you know, we're going to see some more stuff. Were you saying something there? No, no, I wasn't. Okay. Um, huh? Matthew, Matthew just came into the studio. Oh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Trying to give him that silent, get out of here, kid. Um, yeah. So we, we've got more of this to look forward to, and we just have to prepare uh, for 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 defending these things. I think because it's going to be like dominoes. If we allow them to t- to remove, well, we already did it with I think with bump stocks, and now we're on to these other things. And and if if they if they get those down, then they'll just keep going for other things. We could just imagine, you know, triggers, all kinds of things that these guys uh, are I'm, not fans of, huh? I'm- I, I can I definitely see a big target on binary triggers. Yeah, so we've got other things like that, unfortunately, uh, to look forward to. So I think I, I'm going to say it again. I think you know, defense-wise or with legal challenges, we need to uh, make sure we're putting the money into organizations that are actually doing something about it. Um, you know, I've I've seen that some of the companies in the industry out there are creating their own things, and I've taken a look at that, and I've talked to people about it. My personal opinion, I would say, don't do that because basically you've bought stuff from the industry, whatever it is. If we're talking about lowers, braces, whatever, you've bought those things from the industry, and now you're going to give more money to the industry where they have control over it and they can do what they want to do. Versus, to me, a better path would be give it to folks who are fighting 
specifically for the Second Amendment, they can take uh, make better use of that, you know, and it's just it's just the way that I look at it. I think that just makes the most sense. So I don't know if you have any opinion on that one. No, I, I totally agree with you. It does make a lot of sense to put it towards organizations that are working for the average everyday gun owner instead of uh, industry people. Yeah. Not I'm, saying anything to them, but yeah. uh, me, I think it's better spent on like a uh, GOA or uh, – any of the other ones. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm not trying to say the industry is doing the wrong thing necessarily. Um, I think I've spoken to some people and they're trying to do the right thing. In some cases, they're not doing enough due diligence or they're just blissfully ignorant of everything that's going on. It just doesn't make sense. If I was trying to give folks the best advice I can give them, I would say give the money to the to the organizations out there that this is their sole purpose to fight those things and that you have seen that are fighting those things. There's other organizations out there that get a lot of money and they're really not fighting anything out there. So in order to stay effective here when it comes to these kinds of legal challenges, then I think we need to, we could we already know we could identify those organizations that are doing stuff for them. Let's support them more so they can put up more of these legal challenges. Right. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. I think uh, these organizations need the money to do the legal challenges because it's going to get expensive. Mm-hmm. But I see a bunch of uh, let me just chop my camera here. Sorry, mm-hmm. I do see a bunch of uh, industry people uh, working to try to um, um, make things better. But like like you said, we've already gave the industry a lot of yeah. money. Um, through the buying of our product and stuff like that. Yeah, if they have money, they need to give the money to the organizations that are actually fighting. I've seen, you know, I don't want to get into the, in this particular thing with those organizations, but if you're in the industry and you're like, hey, we've got to put money towards this, how about take that money, divide it up between the organizations that we've all seen out there that are fighting and doing things, right? So if you've got it or you're collecting it from people, give it to these organizations instead of keeping it in your own coffers. And then when things go south here, every you know this unity thing everyone's talking about is not really there. I know I can depend on organizations that I've already seen fighting over the last four years. If you just go back to the last four years, you can look and see the organizations that have been fighting the whole time and putting up uh, uh, challenges to all these infringements that are coming out. I think that's the way to look at it. Um, so just to, to, to wrap this up before we, you know, the one thing I wanted to talk about, I did have an, a, a, a former ATF agent on the show, uh, Vincent Sheffalu, and I made some snippets and I put that out here on the main channel. Uh, some of those are actually doing really well, getting people really excited, that conversation with him. He was an undercover officer. Uh, or undercover agent at the ATF, and he's got some opinions. He's retired and stuff like that. It's very interesting to 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 see people's reactions to it. Some some of those reactions I 100% agree with. I'd be interested in knowing what his reactions are now that we ha- you know that we have all this information since then of what's coming out. But the but even further than that, John, I sent this article to you, and I'm going to throw it up here on the screen. Um, there was a body camera footage of a of an ATF agent getting tased, and uh, it's a little bit funny and a little bit ironic. And I just wanted to talk about it before we got out of here. Uh, let me put this article up. Here's the the headline. Here is body camera footage shows Columbus police officers pointing guns, tasing ATF ATF agent. Um, so it goes on. The footage shows Columbus police officer Joseph uh, Fai arrived first on the scene. As soon as he sees ATF agent James Burke, uh, he, he tells him to put his hands up uh, and then pulls a gun. Burke repeatedly identified himself as a federal agent and tells Fai he will not get on the ground. He offered to show Fai his badge, but Fai tells him to keep his hands in the air. Another Columbus police officer, Kevin Winchell, then arrived on the scene and also trained his gun on Burke. They ordered him to the ground. Burke complied, but instead of checking his badge, the officers attempted to handcuff him. 
Burke pleaded with the officers who held him face down on the sidewalk. His glasses fell off to the ground. Poor guy. Uh, Fi tased Burke after he put his handcuffs on him. The officers got Burke's identification out of his pocket. However, instead of releasing Burke, the officers forced him into the back of a cruiser until other officers arrived. Burke has filed excessive force lawsuit in federal court against the city of Columbus and two police officers. The complaint alleges Burke was trying to confiscate an illegally held firearm when the suspect called 911 and the dispatcher said officers Joseph Fai, or Fahey, if I'm saying it wrong, my apologies, and Kevin Winchell. Uh, Bunk, uh, Burke contends this sort of confusion isn't unheard of. However, in a typical situation, the police officers would have checked his credentials and then either assisted with retrieving the firearm or left the scene. Okay, so listen, I read, I read that whole thing, John, because... There's a lot of irony in there, and I'm just really curious to see what you think about this. I mean, it happens. I've actually read uh, articles about an F FBI agent that basically was taking out someone, you know, it was like a couple of FBI agents taking out, and mm -hmm. like a couple of years ago, and the suspect called 911 because someone was like monitoring him outside his house, mm -hmm. and it's FBI agents. Mm hmm. And he was under federal investigation. Yeah. And the police came up and pulled the guns on the FBI agents and handcuffed them. And they're like, we're FBI agents. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's so much irony involved here. You know, this ATF agent, he gets handcuffed, tased, and all that kind of stuff. Now he's suing. He doesn't like how he was treated. Um, I understand that. I guess he was going either after a bad guy. We don't. I don't. They didn't really elaborate here whether or not this was a bad guy or just a person who had something that the ATF. You know, they've been doing. They've been doing nonsense. Um, so this may be a strategy or tactic or something that people will be using more of when ATF sh agents show up. Call the cops. Yeah, I mean, if <laughs> you know, done anything wrong. You know? Yeah, and then see how they like it. You know, the irony is not lost on me, what, what happened here to this agent, and he didn't like it. Look, I don't know exactly what happened. I just think that, to me, it's very interesting. Let's just put it that way, to say the least. Yeah, it, it definitely is. It's very, very interesting, to say the least, and mm -hmm. not exactly sure, of, like, what the guy was there to arrest the people for, if mm -hmm. it was a, a gun or if it was mm -hmm. something stupid like the polymer 80 whatever yeah yeah and he seemed like he was there that atf seemed like agent seemed like he was there on his own which doesn't really actually make sense to me why was he there on his own yeah yeah uh, that that's one of the things i was wondering about usually they roll in pairs at least right right exactly so um if you if anyone out there has uh, a comment on this you want to share with us or you have more information maybe maybe john maybe this is something you can look into and uh update me on i know you i know you're gonna be busy okay i'm gonna go on vacation I mean, I <laughs> like you don't need any more stuff right you don't need anything else to get into yeah, no, I'm with you. I, I feel you on that. All right, so we're going to probably wrap it up here. Anything else going on here that we that you need the folks to know about? The Walmart stuff. Oh, did we completely missed out on the Walmart situation. Let's get into that. What is the Walmart deal? Uh, Walmart is closing down 500 of the FFLs. Uh, they can have two choices with, with their records. They can mm -hmm. either transfer it to um, another Walmart mm -hmm. or they can turn it over to the ETF. Right. So this is, so this kind of thing usually happens in a smaller uh, company. Like I'm an FFL. If I was going to close down, I have the option to either give those records to ATF or give them to someone else who's in the business, right? You can do a successor FFL of if uh, like you're selling it right. to another company. Yeah. So Walmart being a big company, I'm guessing, decides they don't want any kind of liability or anything like that. They just want to get out. How many stores are getting out of uh, the FFL business for Walmart? So How many? 20%. 20%. Okay. Yeah. yeah. How many uh, stores does Walmart have offhand? I don't even know. Uh, they have uh, they have a bunch of stores. Uh, a mm -hmm. little bit of a thousand of them are sell guns. Okay. Are so they're mm -hmm. closing down 500, which is 20%. Wow. Okay. So 500 stores, 
um, getting closed down, all of that, F, all of those FFL documents going to the ATF, which is the way it's supposed to go, unless they found a successor, which they can go to the other Walmart stores, right? Or no? Yeah, that's that's correct. They could. Okay, but they're not. But they don't want to uh, do that. So yeah, it's like more of a, you know, like you said, of like a liability. They just don't want to deal with the records. Mm-hmm. And the records. So yeah. let's give it. Yeah. yeah. But the scary part is uh, the ATF has a third party contractor that's working for them right now, and what they're doing is they're scanning all the out of business records using something called OCR technology, which mm-hmm. is optical character recognition, mm-hmm. which you transforming all the information on the 4473s into a uh, searchable form mm-hmm. and they're uploading them to a database. And it's just not Walmart that they're doing this with. It's all out of business FFL. Mm-hmm. Let's say Hank Strange buys a gun from a Walmart that goes out of business or stuff selling guns mm-hmm. or a company. The ATF can go search Hank Strange and mm-hmm. see all the guns you bought from out of business FFL. Yeah. So they can use this to cross cross-reference stuff. They could do a lot of this once they uh, start building this database. Are they supposed to be building a database? Because it doesn't sound like they're supposed to have any kind of database on anything. Um, yeah. Forbidden from having a gun registry. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this is not a gun registry. It's just uh, easier to search records. Okay. Right yeah. Then. That's scary. It's scary thinking about where we're like going in the next couple of weeks here, though. Yeah, I mean, I think we're we're in a fight for our lives. Mm-hmm. Uh, when gun rights. Yeah, and yeah. then what happens when multiple names start popping up for them, right? What if happens if they have those records, but then they got these records from over here and records from over here, and then they start cross referencing things and people and people's names start showing up, which is, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, right? Most of us are doing things in multiple places. Now all of a sudden they might have people that they can like zero in on, you know. Yeah, they can they can say, hey, why are you buying guns from all these different FFLs? And you can be like, well, because uh, America, <laughs> freedom, because sales. Yeah, Second Amendment. I could do it. <laughs> you know, yeah, it's yeah. I I think that's gonna be so. So that story is also coming out soon, right? Yeah, yeah. That that will be coming out. Uh, that's probably gonna be coming out either today, uh, hopefully today. Um, okay. So that'll probably be, be the first one that comes out, which we should have probably led with that. But there's so much, there's so yeah. much stuff going on here, man. An actual big story because uh, they're scanning it, and they recently changed the 4473. Mm-hmm. The pertinent information is on the front page, which is actually increasing the rate of of their ability to scan in. Yeah, the speed. They could just go to the front, zoop, move everything else over, and keep going, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. People are wondering why the game did. Well, mm-hmm. I think I. Yeah, now we know. We figured it out. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah scary to think about what's um, what's going on here, man. It really is. You know, and we've got a lot of fighting to do. And I think one of the, the whole points of all of this is to really uh, uh, give us extreme fatigue so we don't pay attention. And that's why I think we have to think about exactly where we spend the resources of our time, attention and energy and all that kind of stuff and what we're actually fighting. Well, it's to hit us on multiple sides. Uh, this Walmart thing, I don't think that they knew was going to be able to get out. Mm-hmm. Or uh, mm-hmm. file information, which if they ask me, they're still not going to know how I got the information. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Right. I'm pretty sure they're trying to find out who's your inside uh, guy or girl or whatever it is over there. I'm not, you know, I, I, I don't want to speculate because I think it's a good idea to have someone over there letting us know what's going on. And, and it's just another tool that we can use to keep fighting back. Uh, I, guess. I, I have um, I have several um, like four and four mm-hmm. there for mm-hmm. different things. They are intentionally delaying my form four, okay. like or Gina's desk. Mm-hmm. I want them to go ahead and process my stuff. Right, so they're actually making punitive uh, like moves on you, right? They're actually taking your your stuff and slowing it down to inconvenience you, make it more difficult for you to have access to what you should rightly have access to, um, and they're doing that because of these articles that you're putting out. Yeah, yeah, they don't like me, mm-hmm. uh, you know, airing their dirty laundry, but, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. It's the right of the people to know. 
Yeah, it sucks that that's happening, man. You know, yeah. like this whole brace move shouldn't really surprise anyone. No, I don't think so. If you've been following it, if you've been following it, there's a lot of information out there. This has been going on for years. Um, and then you've been doing stuff on this, I think, going back at least three months, six months. No. I thought every last month that it, this is what this is what was going to happen. Mm -hmm. And uh, people didn't want to hear it. It was like people were at least like, you know, oh, I don't want to hear that. You're anti-gun. I was like, I'm not anti-gun. I'm just telling you what they're going to do. Yeah, yeah. I'm like the most pro-gun person. I, I believe that, you know, guns yeah. should be sold at 7-Elevens and like. You know, if you want a machine gun, you can should be able to order it and have it directly to your house. Yeah. It's interesting, I think, what's going on. Like, you're able to get this info, but the folks out there in the industry that make lots of money um, selling these things, they claim to not have any clue of what's going on. Um, that's interesting. I think people need to factor that into their equation when they're looking at everything here. I'm not saying that they do know or don't mm -hmm. know. I'm not going to on who knew what mm -hmm. when um but you've been talking about look if, if it's your industry of something you should pay attention and if you've been talking about it for several months at least you had several months worth of ideas that something was going on and you could uh you know get some education on that or get up yeah. to speed right it's, it's interesting um in the gun world it seems like a lot of people just don't want to know mm-hmm they, they only want to know good news. They don't want to know bad news until it's too late. They don't want to see the bad news coming until it hits them. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's a good reason for that, Like as we spoke about here. I think the good reason for that is it, it, that affects the bottom line most immediately just in, what it's, in the time that it takes to manufacture stuff and get it out the door and people have to buy it and all that kind of stuff. So I think that's why we see some of that. I don't, I don't want to overstate it and say that it's intentional. But uh, this is the reason why people always have to look out for their own best interest and not put too many eggs into the same basket when you're trying to fight things. That's just the reason for that. Um, you know, yeah, that's how I see it. Like if any company knew or whatnot, um, or like if any company did anything wrong or whatever. I mean, that's up for the people to decide. I I will just put out the facts. Well, you know I me. Mean? I'm I'm more of the play. Uh, you're, I'm more of the play-by-play -play guy. You're more of the calling caller commentator guy. Where you know, mm -hmm. you inject a pain, and I just <laughs> get back to you. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. Yeah, I understand that. And ultimately, I think most of the blame for this has to go towards the ATF, right? You know, and it now being a political football situation that there's people over there, uh, uh, at least on the top, you know, we could maybe deal with uh, with uh, the street level guys working in the field. But the folks at the top, those guys definitely are politically motivated. And what we're looking at right now going into the end of the year, new year, new uh, administration, more than likely, is that those guys are jockeying for positions in the new administration and this is just like the beginning. This is if you're driving down the street and there's there's like you're driving down the highway and there's warning signs like, hey, bridge out ahead, you know, and then you pass another one. It's like, dude, the bridge, there's no bridge there. Then you pass another one. It's like, OK, you're going to die if you keep going here and you keep ignoring all that stuff, you know. Well, I, th I think by me putting it out there, uh, like, you know, I got killed originally by putting some of the stuff out there. Uh, but I think people were looking back at it and realizing that um, what I was trying to do by putting it out there and letting people know. Yeah, because it makes it uh, easier for us to fight. And that's what we need to do. We need to fight back against all of that kind of stuff, refuse to comply with it, refuse to cooperate with them infringing on us, uh, you know, uh, an extreme wrong way that makes no sense. So we, you know, it, I think it's all good stuff, man. I appreciate you doing it. Uh, I'm, you know, we've been going for a little while here, so I'll wrap it up so we're not, uh, you know, <laughs> we're not violating too many standards according to folks out there of how long they want to look at something. For the people out there that do want to communicate with you over this break or do want to support you, how can they do that? Uh, just uh, check me out on YouTube, John Crump too. That's why I'm really trying to grow my stuff. You can follow me on Instagram at Real John Crump, or just check out Crumpy.com for all my links and read my stuff over at Animal Land and support the GOA.
Absolutely. I would echo that. Support GOA and, and, and all the other organizations that are out there. If you want to find out more about us or where's what's all the different things that we're up to, you can go to HankStrange.com and you will find that information. If you want to um, get some cool patches maybe and, uh, you know, <laughs> and support us at the same time, we have these two patches are up on the site right now for sale. Um, so one of them, this one right here, is my blaster patch. And then this is the uh, logo patch that we have, the broadcasting patch. And coming soon, John, check that out. Boom. 2020 was hell in a handbasket, just in time for the end of 2020. Uh, that I patch. Gotta, that I patch. Gotta buy patches. Huh? I got to buy some of your patches. Huh? I got to buy some of your patches. Um, yeah, uh, I, yeah, I, I think uh, I think we can we can uh, hook you up with something here. But um, yeah, so these patches are out, and uh, or that you'll see them soon on the website. I think Lola will actually be giving those. Uh, some people who support us on Patreon will actually get in some of those patches. And if you buy a patch, guess what? You get the sticker version too. So you can uh, stick that on somewhere or share it with friends or whatever. So every time you buy either one of the patches or a bunch of patches, you'll get some stickers. Um, yeah, I'm one of your Patreon supporter. Oh, you are okay. Then you're definitely gonna get you're gonna get some cool stuff, huh? I have them for like over a year. <laughs> Listen, I I I understand. I know that you are. I know that you are. I know. Uh huh. Really? Huh? Are you? <laughs> I know that you are. There's a lot. I don't have a lot of people that support me on Patreon, to be honest with you. So I know that you are. We just do so many things. You don't have to worry. You don't. You don't have to worry about this. There's folks out there who've already supported us and gotten patches and stuff like that. This is the new one. 2020. Hell in a hell in a handbasket. That's basically my logo with a grenade blowing up. Don't worry, John. I got you covered, buddy. I got you covered out there. Whether you, uh, whether you support me on Patreon or not. You can go buy my patch at BlackSwanTactical.com. Uh, yeah. 100% of the proceeds go to yeah. a nine-year-old yeah. with cancer. Check that out. And uh, John sent me this, his 100%, patch. 100% of the proceeds. In, in fact, uh, like 100% of everything. I, come, I paid to get a made up in my pocket. So yeah. 100% all yeah. the money shipping, I'll cover myself. Here's and, another thing from John, by the way, you guys could pick up. Speaking with Giants. Yeah, 100% of that money goes to my niece as well. Yeah. She seven dollars and all seven dollars will go to my niece. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, like shipping, I'll cover out of my own pocket. Absolutely. All right. So John, I'm gonna say Merry Christmas to you. You Merry know Christmas. and uh happy. happy new year. Merry Christmas to all the folks out there. Hop happy holidays. Whatever you celebrate or don't celebrate, it's all up to you. Um enjoy it. Be close with your family. Get to uh get some downtime, get some rest, recharge your batteries. Have a little fun. Hopefully you all get some cool gifts and things like that out there. And it, it recharges you to go out and, and fight the good fight we have to next year. What's that? The watch by Zazer, the guy you're going to have on your podcast. Oh, yeah. Tomorrow, I think uh, we've got. So that is a firearms uh, inspired watch. It looks like the cylinder. Yeah, well, it is. It's revolver. from uh, that's in disrepair. Just hold it up like on, on the side there like you're doing so people can see. Oh, OK. And then just yeah. angle it a little bit so you can see that cylinder thing. Oh, nice. That's cool. Uh, yeah. The one that was disappeared that couldn't be repaired. Uh, so they mm -hmm. got up the cylinder uh, because it couldn't be repaired. Yeah, so no no uh, working firearms were injured in the manufacture of those. Uh, it, was, it was. He only uses firearms that are beyond repair. Okay. All right, that's good to know. Well, yeah, we will be talking to him on Tuesday, Tuesday night for anyone who's interested. So we're going to get out of here. John Crump, thanks so much uh, from Ammo Land News as well as GOA. I will see you guys out there. Thanks so much for watching. Leave your comments and all that kind of stuff. And thank you so much for your support. Um, Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. We're out. Happy New Year. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts.